Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The saying goes that a picture is worth a thousand words, but a young Vermonter from Grand Isle has a picture that's worth a whole lot more. 14-year-old Audrey Shelavati is a grand prize winner in a national photo contest. Audrey entered the Inspired by Science contest. Here's her winning picture. It highlights Audrey's work as a volunteer monitor for blue-green algae in Lake Champlain. The photo contest is sponsored by Bayer and the National 4-H Council. The goal is to encourage 14 to 18-year-olds to consider how science impacts their daily lives and to highlight visually how science has inspired them to action. To learn more about her award-winning photo, Audrey joins us this afternoon alongside 4-H educator from Franklin County, Martha Manning. Thanks so much for coming in today. Audrey, first of all, congratulations. When did you find out that you were the grand prize winner? About a week ago. A week ago, just, just a week ago. And what was your reaction? I was really excited and happy. Mm -hmm. And so I mentioned that you're a volunteer monitor on Lake Champlain. Tell us exactly what you do. So about every week in the summer, we go to three different sites along the lake and we check to see if there's any cyanobacteria in the water. Mm -hmm. And if there is, we measure the level of that and then we put it on the cyanobacteria tracker. Okay, what's the cyanobacteria tracker? It's a website that the Lake Champlain Committee has mm -hmm. and it shows where different cyanobacteria blooms are in the lake and the people in the public can look at that before they go out swimming or boating to see where the sand bacteria is to avoid those areas. Why do you volunteer to do this? I do this, so we live by the lake and we like to go swimming and boating in the water and so I like to help keep the water clean and so we do this so people can avoid the areas mm -hmm. and have a good time in the lake. So now who took the winning photo? My mom did. Oh really? That's a great, great photo. There's another picture that your mom took a couple of years ago. It also shows you working on the lake and our producer found a YouTube video that you and your sister made about lake monitoring. This is something that you've been involved in for a few years. How did you get started? We live by the lake and so we wanted to help people enjoy the lake so we decided when we heard about this program we decided we wanted to help with it. Mm -hmm. And so you mean we, is that you and your sister? Mm -hmm. And my mom. Mm -hmm. And so how much time does that take up a week do you think this volunteer work that you do? Maybe an hour a week. That's it, that's great. Well good for you. Now Martha, as a 4-H educator you've known Audrey and her family for many years. Are you surprised that Audrey has won the Inspired by Science contest? I was excited that Audrey won. <laughs> Um, as we all know, you know, the competition for these national awards can be uh, very competitive, um, but I think that it clearly shows that the work that Audrey and her family um, do um, is important, and it was recognized for that importance um, on the national level. Mm -hmm. And so the spotlight today is on Audrey, obviously, but um, tell me a little bit about Audrey's family as well. Well. We were very fortunate that Audrey's family um, moved here from out of state um, several years ago and that her mom and dad are both uh, volunteers in the 4-H program and they're a very active uh, family. Um, Audrey's sister is now off in college, um, but Audrey and her brother are still very involved in um, many aspects of the 4-H uh, program and we're very happy to have her and her family involved. That's wonderful. Well, now, Audrey, your winning photo is online, and alongside your photo is something that you've written about, how science inspires you. What did you write about? I wrote about my experience monitoring the Santa bacteria in Lake Champlain, and I also wrote about how that has inspired me to research Santa bacteria on my, more, on my own with a science project. And tell me a little bit about that science project. I took different like water conditions. I made different water conditions to see which one Santa bacteria would grow most in. And have you come to any conclusions yet? I don't have the results yet. Not yet? Yeah. Okay. Martha, you've worked with young people for decades. Are you seeing more interest in science from the kids? I think the interest is in science. I mean, the 4-H program has always had a science base, mm -hmm. and it was either um, implied or maybe people didn't recognize it as science. 
but it seems that you know whether you're working on a sewing project and you're working with different types of fibers or a computer uh, project or robotics or whether you're working with a livestock project um, if you really look there is science involved in all these projects. Mm -hmm. I know one project that you're heavily involved with is embryology, which the kids always love. Yes. Um, the science there is, is very obvious, but like if you were even sewing and you were thinking about fibers and you were thinking about what you were going to use for a particular garment, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it was in an area where it may be near, you know, a spark or a, or a flame, you know, maybe fleece wouldn't be your best choice because of the way that fiber is constructed and that it would melt. Um, and then we've got, you know, the science and whether it's, you know, a sheep project, you know, the, the biology aspect. But mm -hmm. um, it's really exciting to see um, youth um, recognizing the science in these projects and then taking it with them um, for some of them into careers. Mm -hmm. Now, Audrey, you're involved in other aspects of 4-H, as we mentioned earlier. One of your interests is shooting sports. What are some of the things you do and why? Some of the things that we do in shooting sports are like archery, muzzleloader, and shotgun. Mm -hmm. And muzzleloader is my favorite, and I like doing that one because they teach you how to load it mm -hmm. and how to aim it and shoot it properly. Tell me a little bit about the loading process, because that's a little involved. So you have to measure your powder out and get a certain amount of powder and then you put that in the barrel. Mm -hmm. And then you have to put a patch and a ball, a lead ball in, and you use a ramrod to push it down the barrel. Mm -hmm. Now Martha, there are a lot of opinions about firearms across the country. Why does 4-H have shooting sports programs? I think it's important to recognize that the 4-H shooting sports is really, um, the safety is the number one issue. It's not that we're promoting um, you know, hunting or it's about responsible ownership and how to, you know, responsibly handle uh, firearms. And the safety record in the 4-H program is second to none. It's just amazing. Audrey, what have you taken away from your shooting sports experience? Through shooting sports, I've learned how to safely handle firearms mm -hmm. and how to be a better marksmanship. Now, you're also involved in the robotics program. Tell me a little bit about that. So for the past few years, I've been on an FTC robotics team. Mm -hmm. And so through that, we build and program a robot to complete certain tasks. And then this year, I'm on the programming mm -hmm. part of that. And how is that different from someone who doesn't know much about robotics? <laughs> so the programming, you have to learn how to program using a specific language. And then you have to make it so the robot can like program so it moves the wheel at a certain time or like mm -hmm. a motor at a certain time. And then you mentioned you're part of a team. Yeah. And so how many people are on the team? There's four people on the team this mm -hmm. year. And what does that teach you to be part of a team that's working on a particular project, do you think? It's good teamwork and communication, so you can all work on the same thing or different things, how they coordinate. Mm -hmm. And so back in 2015, Across the Fence met Audrey's mother and older sister and several other 4-Hers in a robotics competition being held at UVM. It was the first time the 4-H kids had competed. We have a general interest 4-H club called the Champlain Shamrocks um, and we meet in South Hero. We do science things and engineering. This is a subgroup of our 4-H club. So this is the Aluminum Avian Antics. They're the robotic subgroup. Vermonters, let me speak to you for a minute. I hope that you feel right at home here at the University of Vermont and here in the Davis Center because this is your university. They wanted to learn about robotics and so through their learning about robotics, they became interested in this competition. And this is the first time um, that I believe we've had a Vermont 4-H club uh, participate. A nice thing is there's a lot of teams here, but they're all very supportive of each other. They're willing to share ideas. And if there's a problem with one team, someone from another team seems really ready to, to go and assist. So as much as it's a competition, it's really a friendly competition. So the first teams that are going to be competing are 8221, We're just like competing with our robot and trying to just see what it's about because it's our first year and we have been building the robot all year long and working on the software and the programming. And so this is our big day that we've been looking forward to since September. 
You get a challenge, and then you get you can buy a kit, and then you get to decide what pieces you want. Say like I want a linear slide. Like I know I want linear slide pieces and rack and pinion pieces like that. How do you build a robot? Well, it's simple because it's all with Allen wrenches and all the pieces screw together. So like we made, it started out as an eight shape and then we added pieces on and then we started customizing it. So like we kept shrinking it. Then we have to make the robot and we have to figure out what we want it to do. And we also have to figure out like, we had to learn our programming language LabVIEW. None of us had ever done it before, so we had to learn that. We also had to learn how to build the actual robot most efficiently. So what does the robot do? We have two modes, autonomous, which is pre-programmed, and teleop, which is remote control. In autonomous, we have two programs, one to go off the ramp and just stop, and then another one to go out, grab the small goal, score in it, and then come back. And then in teleop, or remote control, we have different buttons that are while we're pushing them or while we just press them to do different things like let the trailer hitch down, bring the attachment up and down, open the door, that kind of thing. They all wanted to learn to build, they all wanted to learn to program, they all wanted to learn to run it. Um, so they got, to, everybody got to learn. Um, they took some online tutorials for the programming language which they use, which is LabVIEW. And we had a lot of evolution to our robot. It started very different and it's just kind of progressed throughout the season. We didn't even know anything. But like now, like we know how to build robots, program in lab view, and like we even learned how to drive them. Of course, the robotics fit perfectly under the you know the science, engineering, mathematics, um, which there's a push for more scientists and more people in those fields. But it's also a way for them to learn that science and engineering and, and math in a really fun kind of way. They're not all considering careers in engineering per se. Um, but since they're interested in agriculture, this has really opened their eyes up to how robotics is used in agriculture and they really noticed that robotics is applicable to a whole lot of fields, not just a uh, technology field. I can't wait for knowing that um, robots take a lot of work, a lot of effort. It takes a lot to get them going, but once they get going, you can do a lot with them. Once again, that was a flashback from 2015. Today we've been talking with 14-year-old Audrey Chevrolati, a grand prize winner in a national photo contest. Audrey entered the Inspired by Science contest and won. What did you win for this? So I won a free trip to the National Youth Agri-Science Summit in Washington, D.C. And when is that? In January. Oh, you must be looking forward to that. Yes. Now, how many kids will be there, do you know? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pretty big deal. This is a huge deal. Mm-hmm. And it's really exciting to see Audrey recognized for her work. And it's also exciting to see that, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from. You know, if you're from a big state or a small state, that everyone has opportunities. And it's exciting to see that um, Audrey won. That's great. And I thank you so much for the work that you do, Audrey, because it helps everybody in Vermont to know how the lake is doing. So thank you. Here's how viewers can learn more about monitoring Lake Champlain. You can go online to the Lake Champlain Committee website that we've uh, listed on your screen, or you can give them a call. That number is 802-658-1414. That's 658-1414. Once again, congratulations, and thanks for coming in and telling us about your program. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.